In this short video tutorial, we're going to have a look at the venous drainage of the head and neck structures. Now, on first meeting this part of head and neck anatomy, it can seem quite overwhelming because there seems to be lots of different veins and lots of connections from veins uh, on the face and the scalp um, and veins that we find um, deeper intracranially. But hopefully, uh, through this video, um, it'll start to become a little more clear. So the main vein that is draining the structures of the scalp, the face and the neck is the internal jugular vein. Now veins that um, drain the scalp and the face also have venous connections with a number of intracranial venous structures. So that's veins that are essentially draining uh, the brain and lie within the skull. The internal jugular vein itself is actually a continuation of um, one of these uh, veins within the skull that uh, exits through the jugular foramen and then continues as the internal jugular vein. And as we know, the internal jugular vein runs down the length of the neck, uh, arising from the jugular foramen, running through the carotid sheath along with the internal carotid and then common carotid artery before ultimately joining with the subclavian vein to then form the brachiocephalic vein, which drains into the um, right side of the heart. If we have a look at this on um, another image um, of the side of the head, which is showing uh, the bony skull, uh, the cervical vertebrae, and uh, a number of venous structures. And if I just draw your attention to the uh, slightly shaded um, structures, venous structures here, which denote the um, veins that lie intracranially, the dural venous sinuses that are draining uh, the brain and other structures within the skull. You can see that um, one of these sinuses, as it makes its way posteriorly to exit the skull, is where we see the origin of the internal jugular vein. And this particular sinus here is known as the um, sigmoid sinus, sigmoid because it's um, S-shaped and, and curved in the way it makes its way down uh, through the cranial fossa and out through the jugular foramen. So here is the origin of the internal jugular vein and you can see quite cleanly in this image how it's uh, a continuation of our intracranial venous structures. So if we look at this on um, another image and um, here we're seeing uh, the sigmoid sinus, so there's a sigmoid sinus and as you can see this continues through the jugular foramen uh, to become the internal jugular vein. And on this image, we can also clearly see um, a number of these um, other dural venous sinuses, which are all essentially um, joining and uh, ultimately draining through the sigmoid sinus into the internal jugular vein. We can view this from a slightly different perspective, um, looking from above onto the floor of the cranial cavity. So if I just um, orientate you uh, to, to this image, here we are, um, as I said, looking onto the floor of the cranial cavity. This is the front of the, uh, the skull, and this would be the posterior aspect. And the green um, pipe cleaners are uh, representing some of the dural venous sinuses that we find within uh, the cranial cavity. So the structure here that's running uh, transversely across the floor of the posterior cranial fossa relates to the transverse sinus just here. So the transverse sinus, um, as it runs around the posterior cranial fossa, uh, will take a turn um, and run inferiorly towards the jugular foramen as the sigmoid sinus, which is what we see here. What this image also helps to demonstrate, or both these images, is the connections between the uh, cavernous sinus um, and these um, other dural venous sinuses. So on the image on the left here, the structures lying here as circled relate to the cavernous sinus or cavernous sinus. And we see the cavernous sinus here, um, either side of the cellular tercicle on this particular image just here. And from the posterior aspect of the cavernous sinus we can see that there are a number of uh, dural venous sinuses connecting uh, the back of the cavernous sinus uh, with the uh, sigmoid sinus here. So there's a connection here 
which is known as the superior petrosal sinus, and a connection here, which is the inferior uh, petrosal sinus, uh, which runs um, from the lower part of the posterior part of the cavernous sinus. So essentially, whatever is draining into the uh, cavernous sinus ultimately will um, make its way through other venous connections uh, to drain out through the internal jugular vein. Having now considered the um, intracranial veins or these durovenous sinuses and how they relate to the internal jugular vein or certainly the origin of the internal jugular vein as well as the relationship between the cavernous sinus which is a type of durovenous sinus and its links to uh, the internal jugular vein. Let's now turn our attention to the veins of the, the face and um, what some of the key veins are and how these communicate with uh, the internal jugular vein um, but also how they also have uh, some connection to the, uh, to the cavernous sinus. We'll also consider how um, another venous plexus known as the pterygoid venous plexus has uh, a connection to some of the veins of the uh, face or veins that are draining the face and also uh, the cavernous sinus. So let's first look at this on um, a very basic uh, schematic representation and then we'll apply it to a more anatomically accurate image. So here we see the view from the right side of the head. I'm just going to add in uh, some structures that will help us navigate our way around some of these veins. So here's the uh, mandible. I'm just going to outline the bony orbit. I'm going to add in the cavernous sinus, which I'll draw in hatched lines to denote that actually this is intracranial. And I'll just add the base of the skull, uh, just so uh, again we can orientate ourselves. So this black line here is the, uh, is the is the base of the skull. So here we are intracranially, the cavernous sinus, and we'll add the location of the pterygoid venous plexus to this image. And we find this in a space known as the infratemporal fossa. So this isn't uh, within the, the cranium, uh, but it's actually deep to the ramus of the mandible in the, uh, this space called the infratemporal fossa or infratemporal fossa. So both the cavernous sinus and the pterygoid venous plexus are collections, networks of, of veins, and they receive venous blood from um, branches that relate to veins that are draining the structures of the face, including the orbit, uh, the nasal oral cavity. We'll add to this image the internal jugular vein and one of the key venous structures that is draining the face, the facial vein. The facial vein arises from the medial aspect of the orbit and descends down the face in a posterior or inferior uh, route to drain into the internal jugular vein. And Around the um, area of the orbit, the facial vein has connections with a number of veins that are draining the orbit. So I've added these in here onto this diagram. So here we have the superior ophthalmic vein and the inferior ophthalmic vein. The ophthalmic veins both drain um, into the cavernous sinus, so they'll be draining uh, tissue structures within the orbit of the eye. Because of this communication with the facial vein, there'll obviously also be some venous drainage from the orbit that uh, descends down the facial vein and into the internal jugular vein. If we come to the pterygoid venous plexus, we can see actually that some of the veins that drain the orbit also uh, drain posteriorly into the pterygoid plexus. And the pterygoid plexus is, is quite a, an extensive area of um, veins that are receiving not only some of the blood from the orbit, but also receiving uh, venous blood from areas of the face that are supplied by the maxillary artery. So areas such as the um, maxilla, the nasal cavity, will have venous tributaries that are essentially feeding into the pterygoid plexus here. And they'll also be connected with, uh, with the facial vein. This pterygoid plexus also has venous connections with the cavernous sinus through a series of small veins known as emissary veins. So these emissary veins actually pass through the, the bone of the uh, floor of the skull to connect the pterygoid plexus to the cavernous sinus. Therefore, 
any um, blood that's draining from an area within the face that's passing into the pterygoid plexus potentially could run into intracranial venous structures because of this communication via these emissary veins. So let's take a look at this now on an anatomically uh, accurate image. So in this image we're looking from the left hand side of the skull and we can see quite clearly these important venous structures that we've just been talking about. So here we have the facial vein, uh, which is the main vein draining structures of the face. And we can see how this communicates with our ophthalmic veins, uh, which are relating to structures of the orbit. We can see also that the superior and the ophthalmic, sorry, superior and inferior ophthalmic veins run intracranially to join the cavernous sinus, which is lying within the skull. Going back to earlier in the video tutorial, we uh, discussed how the cavernous sinus drains posteriorly into another series of dural venous sinuses, the superior and inferior petrosals. And it's through these that ultimately the blood that's drained into the cavernous, uh, cavernous sinus rejoins the internal jugular vein. So we see the inferior and superior petrosal eventually draining into our sigmoid sinus, which um, continues through the jugular foramen as our internal jugular. We see also the pterygoid venous plexus, so this uh, is lying within the infratemporal fossa, deep to the ramus of the mandible, which has been removed here so that we can see it. And we can see that there are connections with uh, the, the facial vein, so this is called the deep facial vein, but also this uh, very complex uh, plexus will be receiving other venous tributaries that are draining the mucilla and the, and the nasal cavity. The pterygoid plexus has the connection or a connection with the cavernous sinus through a series of emissary veins which we can see on this structure here. So potentially if we had an infection in, in this area of the face uh, there are routes by which that infection should it involve the veins uh, to spread uh, into the, the pterygoid venous plexus and um, very rarely to spread um, deeper still into the uh, cavernous sinus, uh, this intracranial venous structure. And we obviously get very concerned about uh, infections that, um, that have spread to involve intracranial structures uh, due to the um, high risk of, of, of quite concerning complications. For example, a cavernous sinus thrombosis or um, meningitis. So just to uh, complete um, and, and uh, finish explaining what we see on this image, the, the pterygoid plexus, um, which as we, as we know is receiving uh, a number of venous tributaries, it does ultimately drain um, into the internal jugular vein as well. And the maxillary vein uh, is the, the vein that essentially is draining this pterygoid plexus. And you don't need to concern yourself too much with um, sort of the veins that uh, run in between the maxillary vein and the internal jugular vein. Just suffice to know that essentially our pterygoid plexus uh, will also drain into the internal jugular vein. So in summary, hopefully what this um, image illustrates is that um, we have a, a number of uh, superficial lying venous structures and a number of deeper lying venous structures, including some that lie within the skull itself. And that as a result of these venous connections, um, should we have an infection within the superficial structures of the face, we could potentially um, get infection tracking to deeper structures such as the pterygoid plexus or even the cavernous sinus and equally um, infections in relation to the orbit could also potentially track into intracranial venous structures. So that concludes um, this particular video tutorial on the venous drainage of the head and neck structures. On the second video um, relating to venous drainage of the head and neck we'll look at the veins that drain the scalp and the connection between these veins and um, intracranial veins or the dural venous sinuses.